Hey there. Um, it's October 2nd. It's about um, 12.08 p.m. And it's a beautiful, beautiful Friday. Um, I just wanted to make this quick video to talk about my progress. Okay, so let's not look at my bags under my eyes because I don't know. I don't sleep enough. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my um, experience with Elizabeth Clare Prophet and who I think, the, how I think that she has um, been in contact with me. For starters, I never knew who she was. I've never heard about her growing up. I never um, had any idea about what she does or her work. Never seen her books, never um, had any type of experience with her. So it was about um, about four months ago when I was on YouTube listening to some interesting stuff. Excuse me. Can you stop? Thanks. Thanks. Love you. Um, and I was listening to some, some spiritual stuff online, and I came across her, her video and I thought she was kind of interesting. Her stuff was pretty interesting. I'm like, wow, okay. I feel like I should have heard of her already before. But um, um, but I was busy, so I had to get ready for work. And excuse me. Can you please? Thank you. Stop it. I'm talking. Okay, so um, it distracted me. So I started listening to her stuff, and then and I got ready for work. And um, after I got ready for work, just just for a little bit. Turkey, gobble gobble. Sorry, not right now. Five minutes. So um, yeah, so I go to work, and I don't really think much about it again um, until uh, like a week later. I decide to listen to a couple more of her videos. Um, no, no, okay. Like a week passed and then I'm driving to work and all of a sudden I get this like, this remembrance in my head. I'm like, prophet, prophet, clear prophet. What is Mar Mary prophet? And then um, I finally figured out what her name was and I looked her up again and I started listening to her videos and I was just blown away with the knowledge that she was dropping, like what she was talking about, the way she ties in Everything there is to know about, like, the Ascended Masters, about the Archangels, about our light bodies, about Ascension, and um, how to become a Buddha, and, like, all these things that the Divine Feminine, the things that have taken me my, like, years to kind of, like, put together and from different sources, and I was able to tie them all together and realize that everything's connected, alchemical knowledge, ancient Kemet knowledge, Enochian magic, I mean, magic in general, not magic with a C, but with a K. I mean, it's like, so I was just like mind blown. So I started following her for a little bit. And then um, one day I started like feeling very like, the more I listened to her, the more I felt like I knew everything she's talking about. And I started thinking, why do I feel like I know all the things that she's talking about, how is it possible that I'm like, I, I can understand all this stuff. And like, and I was just putting together with that and my, the way that my life has panned out and like all my experiences and how interested I am in like ancient arts and mysticism and my background. And just, I put it all together and I felt like, I felt like, you know, she taught a lot about the Ascended Masters and and on my own, before I even knew about her, I, I had this feeling like I wanted to start teaching people what the Ascended Master was and, you know, what it takes to become a master here on Earth and then becoming an Ascended Master and what it means to ascend your body and what it means to, not your body, but your, your soul. You know, once you go through your cycles of life, the soul um, progresses and, um, and that's a whole different topic I can get into, but she wrote a book called um, How to Become a Buddha. And and I was just like blown away. I'm like, why does everything, I feel like I'm following in her, in her footsteps. Um, so then after this realization that I felt very close to her, I went um, to my family's house, hung up with my brother for a little bit. 
And um, I was talking to one of his friends uh, about zodiac signs. I asked him, I was like, hey, what's your sign? He said, um, I'm an Aries. I said, when's your birthday? He said, April 8th. And I, it just kind of stuck in me for a second. I was like, wow, it's interesting. Okay. So um, then I went home and uh, I watched one of her videos again. And then I decided to look up, you know, when she was born and when she died, you know, look up her autobiography or something and um, or a biography. <laughs> and so I found out her birthday is on April 8th. And I look it up in my destiny book because it, the destiny book will tell you what your card is and the and your, the bicycle cards, like the actual bicycle cards, all the tarot deck, which I will do a video on later. But she is a king of diamonds. Like, I am a king of diamonds. And that was just like a, another realization that's very, you know, similar to her. And so then I looked when she died. And she died in October 2009. And... Um, I wouldn't think anything of her death or, you know, I know when the soul leaves the body, where do they go? What do they do? Um, did she become an ascended master? I started thinking, did she make it to her ascension? Did she, she made it obviously like her husband, Mark Prophet. Um, I believe she hit made ascension and I've been, you know, I, for a second I was like, maybe she's, you know, contacting me or something. Um, but then I remembered that my whole, I mean, I've always kind of been in tune and whatnot with like spirituality, but it took me a long time to form it. It's amazing how I formed the way I am. Um, you know, I went from conspiracy theorists completely like locked in on those ideas and scared of everything and just, you know, Illuminati hating and government annoyances and just, you know, blaming everybody for everything until I started changing that into a process of the uh, spiritual alchemy and the inner process of becoming lighter to be becoming more you know it's just very interesting um but that's how I started in 2009 my brother got sick with cancer and I'm, I mean I'm pretty positive that's when this all started it wasn't just that but it was like right when I started school at um, Moore Park College I had a series of things happen to me um that it just you know the stories I would tell you it, it all makes sense you know I started thinking why would why would she pick me to talk to, you know, but you don't have to be perfect, you know, to be, you know, contacted by light beings, by God, by your inner goddess, by your inner God, like to know that you have God within you. And that's what all of my teaching and what all, my, all of my learnings have been the last, you know, few years is the process of self-realization and the alchemical marriage of the flame inside of you and you know knowing who the archangel is and knowing you know having a good heart and having discernment and justice and passion and like compassion and caring for mother and children and the divine feminine divine masculine and understanding that it's not about being male or female or being um, a feminist, or being a chauvinist, or whatever you are, it's always a balance of the masculine and feminine inside of you. And what she teaches also that I learned from on my own is that... One second. Sorry about that. Um, we're not supposed to have dogs here, so I think manager might be on the area. <sighs> Had to go hide him. <laughs> okay, so back to what I'm saying is that that divine ma the divine feminine is not about like women being better than men or or just stronger. It's just about the nurturement that's needed here on this planet and what what it takes. You know, God says that the kingdom of heaven 
it, to get to there, you have to have a, the heart of a child. And even the top of the chain of the angels are cherubim, which are the, the ones that look like little babies, chubby faces. And, the, you know, those angels, if you think about it, the more childlike you are, you came here as child and you forget why you come here. And so the purpose is to remember who we are and to wake up. And so by going through all these processes of reincarnation and being born again, you know, different things and why you have certain experiences is because those are your karma. That's your karma. That's you learning your lessons here on this planet. You're in school. You will keep coming back. And so if you get to that level where you've been here so many times and you did all the self-realization, all the work that it takes to become a master and then to become an ascended master. And not everybody who makes it to fame is an ascended master. We don't know if Michael Jackson is, but I would sure say that like um, uh, Wayne Dyer that just passed away, you know, he's probably a ascended master or some sort. He might come back again because he wasn't perfect. It's not about being perfect in a sense, but it's more about having those, you know, Jesus Christ said, you know, be like me, Christ consciousness. We are all consciousness. We are all, Christ of ourselves and it's about processes of self-realization while you know you know loving yourself enough and then realizing that everybody is a part of you an extension of you and that that oneness is true because we come from the light and we will return to the light and um I, I know this seems like a lot to take in but I tell you that I have answers to everything I mean not everything but I have um I have a process that that I want to do like I'm in an kind of go in a process of how I put everything together and, and put it in a, in a sequence of, um, of events because like you need to know, you need to know, um, like the real holidays, what were, you know, the Zodiac and the planets and the sun, the moon and how they relate to our, our behavior and our, and our personalities. That's a big deal. The divine feminine, divine masculine, um, uh, the seven hermetic principles, the laws of the universe, um, the god and goddess, um, the you know, twin flames, soulmates, what they really mean, your karma, um, the ascended masters and which ones and how they got there and what they do here now and what their vibration means, the age of Aquarius. Um, I mean, there's so many different things that that this all ties in together and it and um and everything that's happening here is as above, so below. So everything that's happening here is a product of our thoughts and our and our vibration. And we only attract what's in our vibration. So I also want to do like a video on that and talk about, um, you know, the frequency in that vortex, the whole Abraham Hicks, her her thoughts. I've listened and um, I have became familiar with many many great leaders, spiritual leaders who are here right now making, you know, making this, this process, um, of ascension, like in it. And it's not just something that people get together and decide, Oh, we're going to make a change. It's, this is happening by an individual basis. That's connecting people together in the name of a, of a common theme. And it's unbelievable how many people are like, are like this, like they won't talk about it. And then they're, they're see someone or they're talk to them and you hit, you trigger something. And they're like, yeah, I know, man, I've been feeling it too. Because everyone's feeling this in some sense, like everyone's going through their own miniature process of awakening. And the key is to realizing that you do not own anybody else. And you don't, you don't like, you, you can't make them ascend any faster or make fun of them for not being awakened. Um, because these people that are not yet awakened, that are still, de still in 3d are, in, you know, they're on the three dimension and, you know, some are already in fifth dimension or some of us are like in the clouds already um i don't think i'm in the clouds i'm still very concrete here i still am very like physical sometimes it's distracting but the whole key to this is that um those people are are still our lamps they're the ones who are not who you think that they're not thinking or they're not smart or like they're just poor or they're, like they're in poverty and like you know these people come here with purpose they don't know the purpose but they needed to go through that lesson whether it's being a homeless person whether it's the person walking by the homeless person and not giving them money the one who gives money every time and like those are all triggers for us to remember when you see numbers like all the numbers are it's all alchemy in a sense like you are 
your own process of recognizing, once you begin to recognize that the universe is speaking to you on a constant basis and you ask for you ask for the Ascended Masters to give you guides or the Archangels or you're working with whoever you work with, Mother Mary, um, Mary Magdalene, um, Kuan Yin, um, Buddha, Jesus Christ, um, any of the goddesses, any of like, I mean, we don't really hear about the gods that much, but there's plenty of them. Like, I think men are, some men are just kind of scared to, to really touch base with those environments, but <clears throat> you can be praying to any of those people and are these ascended masters and you ask for help and it, the universe will supply that for you. You will start seeing it everywhere. You will start seeing numbers that correlate with something you were talking about yesterday. Um, you know, I've been seeing 38 everywhere. Speaking of that, I just said 38 and it turned 38. Okay. See, I'm not even, I'm just saying that what's the per the point of me walking around being like, Oh my God, everything's a synchronicity unless I'm actually going through it. So please don't make it seem like I'm like losing my mind because I'm definitely not losing my mind. Um, it's just that I feel so passionate about this and I feel people need to wake up and see that the universe is calling and speaking to them and anything is possible. This age of Aquarius is the time where you can accomplish great things. Like you can, you can go beyond your wildest imagination by just going in it while you're sleeping you know, taking a vow to remember your dreams when you wake up, you know, writing it down on paper before you go to sleep. I will remember to remember my dreams and sign it. Um, you know, I'm going to do a video on your dream state as well. And, you know, past life regression and, and hypnotherapy and all kinds of stuff, because this stuff just can't be like kept inside anymore. And I'm, I've been asking and like praying for, you know, just to be okay with, being humiliated because people will laugh. People are going to make fun of me. I get made fun of all the time. And I'm finally like ready to be like, you know, I just don't care because there's a reason for uh, for what's happening. And I know that I have the ability to, to speak to people and see eye to eye. And I value that in myself. And I think that more compassion, understanding, and um, just flat out respect for each other and not being so judgmental of ourselves, um, which I tend to be a lot and I'm not going to judge myself anymore, but I want to go back to her one more, one more second. So today, the reason why I decided to do this video is because, um, I had my hypnosis session yesterday with Cheryl O'Neill. Um, she's a certified hypnotherapist and, um, amazing imagery teacher and, um, just person in general. And I've been confiding in her a little bit about, you know, what I've been going through um, as a channel. And um, I confided in her a little bit and told her some stuff that I'm going through. And I mentioned Elizabeth Claire Prophet to her and she was fairly interested. And I told her that I, I had not remember hearing about her before. And so I looked her, I, lo I went online this morning um, to look up any book she wrote. And I found a book on the internet that I looked in it and it said uh, twin flames or something. And the book looks so familiar. And I remember um, about like eight months ago, I was really into learning about soulmates and twin flames. And cause I felt like I can recognize it. And each time I date someone, I could recognize what my challenges were. Like I can always recognize the soulmate. And um, even if it's a friend, you know, these people just shake something up in you. It's your karma. You know, you always are going to be faced with your karma in relationships. So every time I get my heart broken or I, I didn't stick something out, like I know exactly why it happened. And uh, now I literally feel like I can go back and and give thanks to all the people in my life that, you know, and even the ones that I've hurt and they've hurt me, like, you know, I'm sorry and thank you because you were my lesson, you know, and it's, it's just so amazing now if you just have compassion and forgiveness and stuff. Anyway, so I ran upstairs, remembered I actually bought this book and you wouldn't believe who the, who is the writer of the book, Elizabeth Claire Prophet. And turns out I had that book longer than I knew I knew her. So, um, and I read the whole book. I just couldn't remember. I must have, that's part why it was stuck in my head. Um, but it's just another synchronicity and, um, it's just amazing what this, this will lead you down if you just be open to it and be 
embraceive to change. And it's just amazing. But thank you for listening. <laughs> and I'll be back. <laughs>